what's going on everyone and welcome back to another update patch notes review and today we have mid-season 11.6 uh it is about that time halfway through the year which means about halfway through smite one last season of smite one i'm assuming and um here we are it's june so it does make sense lines up perfectly uh, historically speaking there has been a lot of changes when it comes to mid-season so we'll see if that happens today i did hear about a couple rumblings just through twitter as long uh, as well as discord as certain things that are changing and from hearing from it i don't know how good it'll be but i guess we'll find out i got new lighting here and i'm gonna eventually switch this camera over to this monitor at some point because yeah i think i like it on the other side but anyways enough talking um let's talk about smite what's op nothing really op nothing really broken obviously there are items that need to be buffed but i don't think high result will do ever do that like spirit of magus for example is just one item that'll never i guess change or other gods you know shit like that so i guess we'll see what some changes are maybe maybe they'll be in today who knows um, but I honestly, Smite as a whole is kind of lackluster, not gonna lie. Not a lot of good changes, a lot of, like, thought out, cool ideas turned into, you know, not, not great. Like, idea was cool, just executed really poorly. And I, we all know why, it's because of Smite 2, all their efforts are going there. Um, which kind of sucks for the people who are still in Smite 1. Um, it kind of leaves a bad taste in the mouth for people. Because uh, eventually it's going to be Smite 2 and because they told us about the release a year before they're supposed to have it, you know, up, uh, it kind of, um, it, it, it kind of makes it to where it likes everything happening in Smite 1 doesn't really matter. At least that's my view. It's like, why the fuck if Smite 2 is coming out? I don't really, you know, care as much for like all, all the shit that's happening in Smite 1 and tradi and historically in these last patches, most of the changes have been just things that are just like quality of life which are which is cool but it's for smite 2 like smite 2 changes like god reworks from smite 1 which should have just been in the game to begin with uh or a while ago are now in smite 2 and just so happens to, to be like all the changes from the, the cool changes for smite 1 is just smite 2 copy and paste which kind of sucks but is what it is not talking let's get into it uh, as per usual the url for the update notes will be in the description down below if you want to take a little get yourself take a look at it yourself jesus i can't talk does not bode well for the rest of this uh we do have a long patch i can see through this so maybe maybe we got some spicy shit. what the fuck is this this is not okay this is not okay but i like it uh <laughs> that's cracks this is pretty cool. I don't really look at skins, but some of these are pretty sick. Uh, bug changes, balance live with 11.6. I think this will happen next Tuesday. So, game modes. Any changes to the Joust? No. Fuck no, they don't give a shit about that. Conquest. So, new. Spirit Tome upgrade system. The Shaman Camp now continues to cycle through its rotation without limit. Each time players clear the shaman camp, the corresponding color spirit totem will spawn or upgrade an existing spirit totem up to three times per match. Each time players clear the shaman camp. Okay, so I guess shaman camps are going to be here again. Corresponding color spirit totem will spawn or upgrade an existing spirit totem up to three times per match. So, okay, so each, each totem that we have is going to be upgraded. I'm guessing each time they get upgraded, they get newer, cooler things. Uh, we can invade their spirit totems. Uh, interesting. More snowball. Let's go. When a spirit totem camp is killed, regardless of which team is in rotations, continues. Um, okay, so Azure, I'm assuming Azure, is that's blue. So that'll be the cooldown. Um, T1, T2, you get an extra 5% cooldown, which is pretty good. Uh, a weird number to, to go off of. Um, 2.5 and shit like that, but whatever. Uh, golden, this is your pen. You get 5 pen at tier 1. Um, and as you go up, you're still 5% pen, 10 extra pen, which is still pretty good. Violet, 15% attack speed. So it just seems like extra already to pre-existing stats. 15% uh, life, so it's pretty good. Uh, and then Verdant, uh, extra mana health and, or health and mana. 12%, holy shit, that's a lot. That's actually pretty good. I like that a lot. 
little bit of extra small changes to conquest. Seems like that that's it. The fire giant side harpy no longer applies an attack speed debuff. As a solo, no, I'm not saying as a solo player. Every time I play solo lane, I fucking hate the fact that this this bitch fucking destroys your attack speed. And it just like stacks and stacks, and so it sucks and so damn annoying. I don't even know why the fuck they had that there. Because uh, depending on which god you have, you clear more, you clear better, whereas others, you don't clear as well. So it's like, what the fuck? I'm getting punished. But that's more of a quality of life thing. I'm surprised not anything else is happening to Conquest. Or am I really? Um, all gods are now in band. Oh, for you duel players, I might go back to duel. Um, I guess that's pretty cool. I guess they just got rid of the idea. Maybe the duel scene just wasn't like the way they were doing it. They just don't you know fuck with anymore or like maybe it wasn't having an impact on like the bands and shit i i don't know what their metric for success is anymore so um that's pretty cool though for you people who want to play your specific god uh it kind of sucks for the people who play duel i guess i i guess and don't you know you have to ban it there's so many op gods now you have to ban them and then there's still gonna be a lot left open so that kind of sucks for you guys as well but smite twos or smite one's gone so I mean, they're just like saying, fuck it. We don't give a fuck what happens to Smite 1. Smite 2 is coming out. Fuck Smite 1. I guess. Whatever. Uh, Eye of the Jungle. New effect while in the jungle. Gain 3% movement speed. Okay. Well, Eye of the Jungle recently got nerfed into the ground. No one buys the fucking item anymore. You go Spear. Um, or uh, Boomba's Dagger. Boomba's Spear. And Booba's Hammer. Uh, that's usually your path there. So actually, 3% movement speed is fine. I don't know if it really brings it back, but I guess it's a little bit better for up to level 20. Uh, this is the part where I saw rumblings of this, and I'm going to have to see what the tier 2s are, but they're changing tier 2s now. So, um, I'm not entirely sure. I guess we'll just get into it. Tier 2s. Um, in 11.6, we're making huge sweeping changes to tier 2 items across the board. Our goal is to adjust the importance of certain power spikes throughout the game, as well as to further differentiate the items and their purposes. To achieve this, we are adding many new two, tier 2 items and adding passives to existing tier 2 items. In addition, many items have seen a variety of balance changes really mix up build paths. So yeah, basically, tier 2s are getting either passives, new stats, buff, nerfed in terms of gold, basically everything for tier 2. I guess before we get into it, I don't know how much of an impact that's really going to have just just at a fundamental like standpoint like if tier 2s aren't meant for you to buy to keep. So like if you're buffing tier 2 items which first of all you may not even fucking buy. I don't know how many times I've certainly gone to back and just bought a tier 3 right out the gate. So automatically skipping tier 2. Uh, I guess it just it's okay. It, it makes it a little bit better because when you do buy tier two, it doesn't it, it makes it to where you know you're a little bit more consistent in terms of your power spike. We'll see how consistent. Maybe these tier two items are fucking goaded. But you know, generally speaking, I think it's kind of like a give and take double edged sword. But at the end of the day, I don't think it doesn't have any impact at all in terms of first of all, eleven point six as the mid season goes. That's not going to have anything to do with, like, what the fuck? Mid-season is supposed to be, like, a, a, a semi-big patch. Like, it's mid-season. Things are changing. Like, if you look back, there's been a lot of, like, cool changes from the, like, around the mid-season, especially last season, as they had, like, four mini-seasons or whatever. But, um... Yeah, I, I, I'm not... This seems more like a quality-of-life thing that actually, now that I think about it, because Smite 2's system is very similar to you know tier two is having pretty cool things each having each tier two like not exactly the same but tier twos and smite two have more like you know if we want one tier two with more damage or one tier two with more defense you can go and then still go into that exact item that you're still going into the designated tier three or whatever that you're actually trying to buy for but everything's for smite two quality life whatever not really a big change just kind of quality of life um okay so this is bound gauntlet goes into your lifesteal items for your physicals um now builds into soul eater uh new passive your ability heals for four percent of damage dealt increase cost from 1050 to 1250 uh now that doesn't i don't think that affects your obviously your tier three like your soul eater 
Uh, it just means that it takes a little bit longer to get your tier two online, which actually makes it to where your tier you're gonna have your tier one for a little bit longer as well. So you're keeping your tier one a little bit longer. You're getting your tier two later, but if the goal change isn't changing for Soul Eater, which it doesn't seem to be the case, you're actually not gonna have your tier two for that long, if I'm thinking of that correctly. Um I mean, I guess, uh, compared to what it was before, you're, you're not going to have tier 2 as long as you had before. Um, but your abilities heal for 4% of your damage dealt, so that's basically a, a mini soul eater. Um, I guess that's cool. For an extra 200 gold, I'm not entirely sure. Because, like, I'm trying to think in, in, in which this would be. I mean, okay, I guess this is a good thing to talk about. If you're going to get... This having tier twos have more of an impact makes it to where your power spikes are a little bit more consistent. So instead of having you know your tier one and you buying your tier one and your tier two and waiting to buy your tier three, uh, your tier twos generally speaking don't provide you with much of anything. It gives you like a little bit of power, a little bit of whatever you're going into, um, whatever item you pick, whether it's defense, you know, damage, whatever, attack speed. Um, but now with this, it makes it to where like you buy your tier two and it's you know not just mid, I guess. So um it makes it to where your 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 damage spike or your spike in general from tier two to tier three isn't as big whereas before you know your tier two is like right here and your tier three is all the way up here so once you buy your tier three that's when you're going to start being able to do shit well instead of tier two being right here now it's like right here and your tier three is right here so it's like it becomes more consistent with your tier ones tier twos and tier three instead of like being like tier one tier two and then fucking tier three back before this i guess um, so that's one thing to talk about, which is pretty good. Um, that doesn't help the fact that if you have all the gold that you need, you're going to skip tier two anyways. And it's not going to be that it's going to be like as if it was like, who cares? Who gives a fuck? Um, so this this seems just like a quality of life. These are things that I feel like should have already happened uh, a while ago. This this is not from what I see. And then. Um, and I guess this also helps you or incentivizes you to back more often so instead of you know greeting for like an extra wave to get your tier three this does mean that you can you know once you get you'd be like oh i got enough for your tier two i don't give a fuck i'm gonna wait for my tier three because that's what really matters well now with these tier twos you can back or if you have enough gold for your tier two you can back and be like well tier two is actually pretty decent right now let me just go get my tier two have more impact and then eventually get my tier three so i guess it incentivizes you to back more often but other than that, that's not really, I mean, that's just quality of life. That's the thoughts that I have right now. Let's keep going. Uh, Curse Gauntlet now builds into Crimson Claws, Blood Forge, and Devour's Gauntlet. Okay, so this is the only, this is this item only has one path. This item has three paths. Decrease gold by 100. Increase lifesteal from 6 to 9. That's pretty decent. I'm assuming most of these are going to be pretty good because they're just buffing tier 2s. But again, the impact of it is not going to be all that crazy like it's going to give you a little bit more of an impact but you're still buying into your tier three eventually like so it's going to be very fleeting um i guess it will depend on the next ones but this one doesn't have really much of a passive this has a new passive uh, but based on what this i think they're just going to do like similar passives to what you're building into which makes more consent makes more sense but again just quality of life uh blood forge cost from 100 okay so that's pretty good so yeah, Blood Forge wasn't really being, it wasn't really a, it's a pretty niche item for like your assassins and I guess technically hunters at one point in, in one season. I guess you still can do it. Just, nah. um, so that's pretty good. Uh, short bow decreased gold. Okay, that's actually pretty big. Tier ones are pretty big. Uh, decreasing that gold. That's actually pretty nice. Uh, charge bow decreased cost from 1200 to 1000. Arguably, this has been the best like T2 because this T2 actually had a passive for some reason They didn't give to any other items in the past before uh, Decreased damage from oh, okay, so Double-edged sword here decreased damage from 15 to 30 percent of your to, to five to oh shit That's a whole 10 power plus an extra five percent That's pretty big. Uh, I don't think it's gonna change much of anything because you're still if you're buying fucking oboe tier 2 isn't what you're looking for if they're not changing tier three, the fuck, I don't, you're not looking for tier two. You're looking for your tier three oboe. So cool, I guess, for like the small, because oboe is very cheap. So it's like, okay, cool. I guess I won't be doing as much for the 
five or like for the three minutes until I get my enough gold to buy oboe, but okay. I guess I don't know. Uh, Hunter's bow increased cost from 1200 to 1250, added five pen. Okay, that's pretty big. Once we start adding pen to things, this is where it starts to because now I'm thinking if you now I'm thinking a little bit outside the box. If we're to be expected to buy your starters, right? You buy your hunters, your leathers cow, your death's toll, mannequins. What if you just go straight into your tier two and skip your starter, I guess? Skipping your starter kind of sucks. As long as you build your starter, you can get away with it with certain items. Like in Joust, you can go up, you can build your Griffin Wing because that power spike is really fucking good. And it costs, it's really cheap. So you can get your starter right afterwards. But outside of that, you don't really do much of that. So I'm wondering if some of these tier twos like this would have more of an impact. Because if you skip your starter, and this goes for any class, you skip your starter. So there could be some items where you do that. I could definitely see that. Where you just skip your starter and eventually get, but, but again, it's another double-edged sword because starters, uh, it's in his name. It's a starter. And on top of that, it's the biggest bang for your buck. You get like a starter for around like 600 to 750 gold, whatever the 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 range is. And you get a baller fucking passive. And then your late game, obviously, you don't, generally speaking, never want to not get your fucking starter. That du double negative. You always want to get your starter at some point because starter items are the best game, best items in the game. At the beginning and then once you level them up they're the best items in the game at the end as well so i guess we'll see um but five pens pretty big uh storm seeker this fucking item they're increasing costs from 1900 to 21 increase physical power by five and they're adding pen okay once we start adding pen to things uh that's pretty good uh i'm the passive is obviously gonna be staying the same i didn't add anything here but for an extra 200 gold i mean that's pretty that's pretty viable. I think Storm Seeker was kind of an underrated item anyways, but now that you buffed it, now I'm starting to think that you can actually fucking get away with buying this item. Hold on, I gotta fix. I'm not really in the frame, I guess. Whatever. But no, you can actually start getting away with buying this item, which is actually pretty nice because pen, pen is huge. Adding pen to things, I mean, you know, it changes a lot in my opinion. All right, Piercing Morning Star. Is this a new? Uh, this is a new item. The fuck? Builds into Heart Seeker. I guess it's a new tier two. Every five seconds, your next ability deals two percent of target's maximum health as physical damage. Holy shit! Okay. So it's just a mini Heart Seeker. Like I've been saying, it kind of makes sense now. Now I'm thinking about it because uh, Hunter's Bow gives five pen. This now has five or ten pen. So it makes sense why it would have similar stats. Um, so 150 mana, 10 MP. That's actually pretty decent. That is hella expensive, though. Holy shit. I mean, Heartseeker is an expensive item to begin with, but holy shit. Um, I'm wondering if you could build this item and just leave this here and just have a mini Heartseeker in your items without actually getting Heartseeker. Uh, but again, tier twos by default aren't supposed to be better. And I'm not saying that this is better than a tier, tier three Heartseeker. But like, I don't know when you would ever build this and be like, I'm not going to go into a heart seeker because every five seconds checks with you 2% uh, maximum health physical damage. That's pretty good. But like, you're never really keeping this. So, I mean, I guess it's good if you want to get your tier two, your tier two is a lot better. You can have more impact later in the game once you get this. But eventually you're leveling it. So, I mean, I guess it's that's pretty cool. I don't think you're going to have any weird strats with this. I don't think. Uh, short sword. This is for your crit. Now builds into rage and death bringer. Interesting. New passive. When critically striking enemy, gain a stack of five power. Okay, so you're getting 15 power at max stacks whenever you get, whenever you critically strike someone. Um... Again, very similar to that. Nothing crazy here. I mean, it's similar to your fucking Deathbringer. Um, and, you know, you're stacking like Rage, shit like that. So that's pretty cool. Um, you can now, you know, have some benefits of critting without having to build your actual third item into your crit. Uh, Eight-pointed Shuriken, builds in a Demon Blade and Bladed Boomerang. 
Uh, doing damage and item, gain the best basic. And with the enemy god with a basic attack, gain 3% attack speed for 10 seconds. So 15% attack speed, very similar to bladed, or I'm sorry, demon blade. Um, and you get 20 power, 1300 gold is still a lot. Um, so yeah, kind of just quality of life change. I'm assuming most of your tier twos are going to mimic what they build into, either a combination or just like one of them. Got this fucking mic's pissing me off a little bit. Um, nothing much I can say about it. You're never going to build a tier two and keep it there. Um, nothing really new I'm thinking of right now. I think I've kind of covered everything in terms of like what could potentially be done and like my thoughts on it. So I guess I go back after once we go over this. A thousand folds blade now builds an Equinox, Hasten, and Shadow Drinker. This item I forgot's even a thing. This item blows. I don't know why we're not buffing that. Maybe we are. Who knows? Uh, passive gain five percent movement speed for ten seconds on killing or assisting any god. I mean that's pretty good. Stacking up to three times. I'm kind of niche though. When are you gonna? When are you really gonna kill three gods with a tier two? With the, I mean it's that's super fucking niche. I guess it's cool though. Movement speed's always fucking good. Swift Edge, I guess, is a new tier item. Builds in the Serrated Edge. Damaging enemy guy with ability grants 3% movement speed towards them. Toward them for 3 seconds of 3. So 9% movement speed. More movement speed. Uh, this gives movement speed now. But 1,500 gold. They're making tier 2s pretty expensive. Or maybe maybe I'm just reading this wrong. I don't know. Uh, that's okay. Uh, I said, actually, this one's probably one of the better ones. Damaging an enemy god with an ability, you just get nine percent. You just get nine stacks or nine uh, percent movement speed just at all time, basically, which is pretty cool. Uh, Balance blade now builds an executioner in Asi. On damaging enemy with a basic attack, gain two physical pen for five seconds, stacking up to three times. Okay, so very similar to an XE passive, but instead of percent pen, it's physical pen, which I guess that's cool. Um. Yeah, I don't, uh, tier twos. I don't know. Aussie decrease physical power from forty-five to forty. I don't know why we're added. Oh, okay. Added ten physical penetration. Once we start adding pen, uh, if you guys don't remember, Aussie had pen before this, so we're just kind of reverting it. Uh, they're not changing anything else besides five power. If you're not already picking up Aussie, it's time to pick up Aussie. I think this is gonna be a switch in terms of Devos being the meta especially for conquest it's probably gonna swip swap for the aussie and in joust you're always picking up aussie now like i don't know there's any other fucking item you want besides maybe devos but even then aussie is just now a better item um you might actually be picking this up earlier in the game now i remember when we were we were building aussie in the beginning of the games and now you're sort of building them towards the end uh because you just want dom and shit like that but Aussie might actually be a pretty solid pickup first item into the game. That's pretty that's pretty good. Keen Bladed, another new tier two, built in the kins and duality. Uh, your basic attacks deal an additional 10% of your basic power as physical damage. Okay, so very reminiscent of duality. 15% attack speed, physical power, 1550. Um should uh, builds into Black Thorn Hammer passive while you're under 25% of your maximum mana gain 20 MP5. Ooh, 1100. Now, this is what I'm talking about. 15 power, 100 health. Yeah, I mean, it's still, eh, that's not really that great. Um, but for 1100 gold now, think about this with me. For Joust, you could honestly skip your starter and go straight into this. Now, I don't know if I'll recommend this, but it is an option. One of the main things in Joust has kind of been a thing is having your early MP5 or mana sustain, and it always usually lacks. And so, like, Blackthorn Hammer, just in its in and of itself, kind of solves that for your hunters and your assassins. I'm sorry, your warriors and your assassins. Hunters don't build this, generally. Um, so... You could just go straight into a Blackthorn and then eventually build into your Warrior's Axe. If you wanted to, you're going to have 400 gold left over, so you could get your Chalice in like two pots or whatever. And then you can go into either your uh, upgraded Blackthorn, because it is a very cheap item. Remember, it's only two, 2200 gold, I think. They've recently buffed it. 
and then you could go in your warrior's axe or you could go straight into your warrior's axe after you get this and then so this is actually one of the items i think you could rush i might have to test that because you never run out of mana you have 15 physical power again warrior's axe gives you that though so you're really only buying this for the passive and warrior's axe you get warrior's axe and a tier one which rounds out to be a little bit better outside of your mp5 so the mp5 is the only thing i'm looking at here because otherwise you wouldn't build this and go into an axe you still just build the regular shit uh, but either way even if you go warrior's axe into like a blackthorn at least you know that you're tier two you'll have you'll have some type of so you could just back really you could go i get like one wave two waves a buff here and there and then back and get your tier two and then you just never run out of mana which is actually pretty good Pretty, pretty, pretty solid. Doesn't really change much, I'm going to be honest. Well, I guess it does. It's just a quality of life. Nothing, you're not going to have like a fucking crazy revelation. Like, oh, oh my God, this breaks. This is, this is great. This is, it makes the game so much better. It's just like a little bit better for you, I guess. For if you want to build it, I don't know. Heavy Hammer now builds into Frostbound Hammer. New passive. Each time you... I'm guessing this is going to be fucking a, a variant of Frostbound. Each time you basic attack an enemy god, gain a stack. When you get four stacks, your next basic attack damage slows the enemy god by 15%. Uh, so, when you get four stacks. So, after four stacks. So, you hit them five times, basically. Um, and it slows the enemy by 15% for two seconds. Additional slow apply from this item. Refresh the cooldown. cooldown or uh, duration. Cool. Still pretty expensive. Smithy's Hammer builds in Dawnbringer Forge, 1,200, 25 power, 100 health. That's pretty solid stats for a tier 2, I guess. Uh, this one doesn't have a passive, though, so I'm assuming some don't have passives. Uh, Talent Trinket, this goes into um, Bancrofts and Typhons, so I'm guessing you're going to get Magical Lifesteal and Power. Each second, new passive. Each second you are in God Combat, gain one Magical Power and... <laughs> For 20 so you i mean that's pretty solid but you're never gonna stop at tier two and i don't know i mean people like to go into tier two trinket and you know go straight into like a bancroft so maybe rushing this would be good now for duel because you can't go into starter items if you're a dual man this is actually pretty good for you because you don't have starters um so this actually has more of an impact at least early game because now your tier twos are actually going to be worth something but for the other 99% of the population that plays everything else besides duel, because it's a dead game mode, um, meh. Um, but you know, I still see some people build straight into a tier two. You know, if you're like Hades or Anubis or some shit, um, I still think going starter is a little bit better. But still cool. You can get up to 20 power and then 20% life steal, which is a lot of life steal. Um, decreased magical power by 10. I guess you kind of have to, and then decrease. Okay, so it's double edged sword. Still really good though, I think. Uh, Mystic Ring, this looks like Shaman's Ring. Builds into Demonic Grip and Hasten Ring. 1300 gold, 20 magical power, and 20% attack speed. That's actually really fucking good. I'm assuming the ones with like the passives that don't or that don't have passives will have pretty good stats. Just based off these this one and the hammer. Uh, Enchanted Ring now builds into Telkine's Ring and Cyclopean. New passive, your next base attack, additional five plus three. So if I can only occur once every eight seconds reduced by two seconds for each successful basic attack enemy got so this is basically a telekines ring with its passive in, in terms of extra damage um and then fucking cyclopean ring we're reducing it by two every time you hit an successful basic attack decreased by five power and increased by 100 book of souls now builds into soul reaper and polynomicon um gain a stack each time you damage an enemy guy with an ability or a basic attack at four stacks, your next ability or basic attack deals 20 plus four per level magical damage. Um, so basically like a poly, a mini version of poly, uh, decreased mana or increased by 25. Book of Secrets builds in the Tab of Destinies and Book of Thought. That's a little bit weird. It's going to be a little bit interesting to build into that because um, it's just not the only oh, the same picture. Each time you damage an enemy guy with an ability, gain a stack. Each stack grants nothing. <laughs> okay but when you upgrade this item these stacks transfer you to upgraded I oh oh shit now this is something interesting you may only gain one stack every four seconds and get only gain stacks once per god per ability hit max 50 stacks 
Now that is interesting. This is an item I suggest you build tier two and then go into your starter. If you're a god that builds Book of Thoth or, well, I guess it only build, goes into Tablet of Destinies or Book of Thoth, but if you're a god that builds Tablet of Destinies with the recent changes to Book of Thoth, making Book of Thoth easy to stack, you don't really care too much about stacking that right away. You want to get your tablet stacked. If you can start stacking your, your tablet once one minute into the game and it transfers over, you can actually have max stacks like close to 10 minutes in, I feel like, depending on how you play, obviously. But at the very least, you're getting like uh, 10 to 15 extra stacks, I feel like, by just building tier two and not and just skipping starter. You go you go uh, this into eventually Tablet of Destinies. Or, you know what? You could go tier two of this, go into your starter, because you're still getting stacks. Now, of course, you're not going to be doing as much damage, but you're getting your, instead of going like straight into a Tablet of Destinies, you go you go get your starter after you build tier two of this and then you finish your tablet of destinies because the, the stacks go into your tablet so actually i think building this straight up is actually really cool so i would actually suggest either going straight into book of secrets to get your stacks for your tablet of destinies or if you're building book of thoth of course but generally speaking this is for tablet of destinies um then you go into your starter and then eventually finish with your tablet that's actually pretty good. I like this one. This is probably the best change, I think, uh, as a mage bias. Uh, Book of Thoth. Reduce stack count from 100 to 50. Increase damage required per stack, 450 to 900. Okay, so they're they're just making the stacks less, but each stack require a little bit more uh, increased mana per stack, which, generally speaking, no, it's basically the same thing. Um, Sorcerer's staff. This goes into, like, uh, your stacking item i can't remember warlock staff on leveling up on leveling up heal 10 percent of your maximum health and mana over three seconds that's an interesting passive okay that's pretty cool i mean once you level up and you have this up you just get an extra 10 percent of your health and that could come in pretty clutch uh especially if you're like a guardian because 10 percent is a lot more for a guardian than it is for a mage depending on when you buy this although i don't know how much of an impact or why you'd build this for your fucking guardian i guess but whatever uh, Enchanted Spear, this goes in Spear Desolation, Divine, I believe. Passive, on damaging an enemy god once per god, wait, on damaging an enemy god once per god per ability, gain two magical pen for 10 seconds, stacking out to three. Okay, so this is sort of like fucking, um, actually, I don't even know what this would be. Two magical pen, I mean, it, it, it has pen like uh, Divine and desolation although desolation has a and divine have different passives for that divine obviously anti-heal and like a little zeus proc you know electric thing and then Deso takes your cooldowns off when you kill um but i mean it gives you pen which is pretty cool so you can get up to six pen decreased by 50 which is actually pretty good again remember enchanted spear still gives you um pen from the change before so it's actually has a lot of pen which is actually pretty good still just not buying this first off i don't believe uh decreased magical power from 60 to four Ooh, that is a lot though ah that's a lot uh restored artifact new passive on damaging on damaging an enemy god once per ability one one per god per ability. okay so same thing for this but you get a maximum of your mana maximum percentage of your mana uh now we're going to defense uh this is gonna be on for all of the tier twos so uh, decrease cost from this is actually pretty huge i hate building this item because it costs so much but it's it builds into something one of the best items in the game being your fucking pridwin fail not or um what are the other items mirrodin and uh Arendite. so that's pretty good making this a lot easier to build night shield decrease cost from 16 to 15 pretty cool decrease cost from 16 to 15 nice on uh, Arendite in and of itself is decreased by 100 gold which is pretty cool Aaronite's a very niche item no one really builds it so sage of stone now builds into erosion abyssal stone decreased cost to 1250 which is pretty good uh decreased magical by five nothing really crazy here now builds into erosion and abyssal stone so this is tier two tier one is actually getting cheaper but actually am i tripping this is tier one, right? 
Sage of Stone. I don't know it's here. Hold on one sec. Okay. I guess they're making a different tree. So Sage of Stone is going to be built into Erosion and Abyssal Stone. Enchanted Stone. Am I tripping? Is this item even in the game? I don't know. Now builds into now builds into both of these. Okay. Decrease cost from 1400 to 1250. Oh, this is this is the exact same thing. I don't know what the fuck this means. This is the exact same thing. They both build into the ex same exact item. And they are the exact same. Okay. I don't really know what that means. Uh Emerald Mail. Getting an assist on enemy god or minion kills kill grants two two protections for five i can't speak holy shit let me restart getting an assist on an enemy god or minion kill grants two protections for five seconds max five stacks okay decreased by or increased by 100 so actually this is for your like your gauntlet and your other irrelevant items that you don't build into <laughs> uh getting an assist on enemy god i mean it's two protections so i mean you're getting up to 10 protections so you're, i mean it's basically a mini gauntlet of thebes pretty cool i guess Talisman decreased by 250. Defender's Blade, Relic Dagger, and Lotus Sickle. You're actually getting some pretty decent stats here. 10% cooldown on tier 2 is pretty good. Uh, increased physical protection by 5. Enemy hit by your base has 20% reduced healing. Nobody builds this fucking item. If you do, I don't know why. Uh, Silverman Talisman now builds into Pestilence. Okay. The enemy gods within 50 bodies have their healing reduced by 50. Okay, so you're getting your you're getting your anti-heal, which is pretty good too, a little bit earlier. Renewing talisman, which seems like a new item tier two, builds into absolution, hardwood amulet, talisman of energy. Gain a stack each time you damage or damage damage by an enemy god once per ability. Upon reaching five stacks, lose oh wait, each gain a stack. Each time you damage. Upon reaching five stacks, lose all stacks and restore 100 mana and a 40 unit radius around you. Okay, I guess. Nothing crazy. Um, 35 magical protections, 1250. Um, Spellbound Kusari now builds an Oni Hunter's Garb and Genji's. You pass it when you hit by an ability that deals da gain 5% magical mitigation, 12%. So I guess that's pretty cool. I mean, if you want to go into a Genji's, you can get like a mini a mini hunter only hunters as well which is cool i guess increased by five for mb5 a new tier two builds in tomorrow and shoguns shoguns and tomorrow shoguns is gonna have like it's gonna have two it's gonna be like increased attack speed and decreases the enemy's protections i don't know uh reduce all enemies protections by four for each ally within units so you can increase okay you're getting basically both the best of both worlds for tier two but again the stats aren't that great so you're not really holding on to this time. It just makes your tier two a little better, I guess. Silver Breastplate now builds into Breastplate Regrowth and Breastplate of Valor. Increased costs by 150. Decreased physical protections from 35 to 25, but added 10% cooldown, which is pretty good. Giving cooldown and, you know, other stats like... The, and, and more impactful stats on tier twos, I think, are pretty good. Increased physical protections by five. Sturdy Breastplate, another tier two. Builds in a special armor contagion, 35 magical protection. This this is one of them that doesn't have a lot of uh, or doesn't have a passive for special armor and contagion. Mana, removed mana, MP5, uh, increased health by 100, added 20 MP5, nothing crazy. Same exact thing to contagion, just 50 less power. I'm sorry, 50 less health and five more HP5. Um, spiked shield builds in the glad and void shield. 1400 this one doesn't have a passive but it's pretty decent stats holy shit this is getting tiring because i still don't think this have that that big of an impact on the game now builds into phalanx and berserkers each second you are in god combat gained one percent attack speed for five seconds max 10 stacks okay so for an extra 50 gold you can get up to 10 percent uh, attack speed which is pretty pretty okay uh steel mail now builds in mystical mail um Deal 15 magical damage per second. So that's just a mini mystical. Um, bronze mail, new tier two. Emperors, Sov, and Midgard. No one builds Emp or Sov, really. 
Uh, every fourth basic attack you are damaged by grants you a 75 health shield that lasts for five seconds or until destroyed. I guess that's okay. I mean, I don't really know how every fourth basic attack you get a shield. Maybe build this later and you'll have a bigger in you're still getting destroyed by autos. I, I don't fucking know. Cloak of concentration. Okay, good. We're almost done. New passive. When you're hit by hard crowd control, steal 10 protections from all enemy gods within 20. Okay, hold on. You steal. So it's basically like a, um, a mini spirit robe. Uh, all enemy gods. That's pretty solid. That's pretty solid. 15 to 14. Decreased cooldown reduction from 7% to 5%. Okay. And then mantle discord decreased code. Okay, so they're just making mantle even better and better. Um, I might just start picking up mantle <laughs> instead of uh, spirit robe from now on. Uh, those are all your items. Again, I still don't think how much of an impact it is. It's more of a quality of life thing. Uh, there might be some, you know, items, specific item, niche items that you might just build at first off. Like, you know, the, the, the Book of Thoth or the tablet. That one's pretty, pretty good. Um, it's going to incentivize you to go back and build your tier twos probably. Um, rather than just waiting for tier threes because now tier twos have more of an impact. Um, doesn't really change much outside of that. Just, you know, making it to where your power spikes are more consistent. Um, and then depending on, you know, how you play and when you get your goal to buy items, you may not even buy, build your T2. So overall, cool quality of life. I understand why you're doing it for Smite 2. Overall, don't think it's going to be that crazy. That's not crazy. That's not even like, it's just okay, I guess. Uh, now we're going in the gods. My boy Vulcan, as much as I know he needs this fucking nerf, I ate it. Uh, if you guys don't know, Vulcan's pretty busted in Joust and is really good in Conquest. He just does everything with the safety aspect of it, too. He just does so much damage. You put down your fucking turret, and that's basically a god in and of itself because it does so much damage. Um, anytime you're in range of that, and it's so hard to kill the fucking thing anyways. And even if you try to kill the thing, uh, you're wasting shit on it. So it's like there's never really any value. Um, but... To be fair, he needs a, he needs a, a nerf. Backfire. So this is one increased cooldown from eight to six to nine to seven. To be fair, it was a really it was on a really cool or quick cooldown, even when you didn't build any cooldown. Um, one second. Not gonna do much. I'm gonna be honest. So that's pretty good. Uh, for me at least, I want to spam the fuck out this god. I'm cringe. Inferno cannon decreased damage from 45 to 165. Yeah, this this thing needed a, a nerf. It really was just this two. Decreased damage from 45 to 165. So it's basically, it was like late game. The early damage wasn't anything. Uh, 45 to one, 45 to 145. Um, 20 damage. Not sure that's going to do much of anything either. Uh, I guess it slightly makes him nerfed a little bit. Uh, increased cooldown by two. Okay, that that's, that's fair. Uh, I will say though. Uh, this only incentivizes me to build more cooldown to basically get the exact same effect for Volk that Vulcan has just with 20 less power not gonna do much so any Vulcan players still good uh, Cupid uh, increased basic attack from 30 to 30 32 to 38 increased basic attack power so he's just generally just getting more damage he's not really in a good spot anyways uh, decreased mana cost from 70 to 90 to 60 to 80 slowly buffing the hell out of cupid which i'm not opposed to because cupid is not that good right now flutter new effect on cast double the attack speed game from this ability for four seconds okay so if you don't guys don't remember he actually got attack speed just in his whenever you level this up and now you get double the attack speed when you use your three so use your three and you get more attack speed which is actually pretty cool uh cupid feeling a little bit better now uh donza Fool's Gold, increased damage from 95 to 275, 95 to 295. Pretty solid. Increased explosion damage uh, by an extra 10 power overall. Alluring Spirits, increased healing from 20 to 100 to 30 to 130. Just a little bit. Not crazy. It's still it's a flat number. So keep in mind that if it doesn't scale off of anything, Tang Dons is a little bit better too. Uh, decreased cooldown. At least early game by two seconds, which is pretty nice. Uh, increased explosion damage from 50% to 75% of the... Oh, holy shit. Tank Donza, baby. A lot better. I think this actually benefits tank going building him more tank, in, in my opinion. 
none of the scaling really changed. It was just the flat damage. So uh, Apollo decreased mana from 790 to 60 to 80. Serenade cooldown from 17 to 13. To, so early games would be matter more. Uh, the moves increased buff duration from three seconds to five. If you guys don't know, in his three, he actually gets protections and shit like that. So that's pretty cool. Um, nothing crazy for Apollo though, but a little bit of a uh, little, little, little bit of a little buff. Baron Somdi increased base health from 50 to oh god they're making him more of a tank god damn it increased double hit damage from 15% to 25% shit wrap it up increase slow duration 1.5 to one oh wait and decrease slow duration 1.7 1.5 increase root from oh my god I ate this guy with a passion and joust holy shit now that he's buffing him they're buffing him to where now he's more incentivized to build this fucker tanky like a fucking true guardian this only this entire thing right here makes tank baron a hundred times better great thank you poseidon increased base attack speed from 8.87 to 9.5 they're making this guy more of an auto attack god jesus oh no they're increasing attack speed to five if you guys don't know Poseidon is too, if you build him correctly. Oh god, late game he just smashes. He does like fucking 2,000 to squishies with his fucking autos. Now he's getting 5% more attack speed and more attack speed in his base. Increased damage scaling per tick from 15 to 20. Holy sh- per tick? Oh shit, an extra 5% per tick. Christ, increased damage scaling on the center hit from 45 to 55. <laughs> As much as I know Poseidon needs a buff, I hate having to go up against a Poseidon because he just one-shots you. Oh my god. Well, Poseidon's back. Poseidon's really good. And now you can kind of build him with both types of builds. So that's pretty cool. Scylla Sikkim decreased mana from 60 to 100 to 60 to 80. It's pretty good. Crush increased damage to minions. Yeah, Scylla sucks. Always sucks with, with early game. Even with Conduit Gems. So maybe her Crush can actually kill the fucking wave at level one uh increased cast range from 65 at rank wait wait increased cast range from 65 at, at ranks one to four to 70 at all ranks okay so now you can actually cast it five units more interesting increased mp5 from 4 to 12 to 8 to 16 okay so Scylla is a lot better at least early game uh freya increased base health from 567 to 610 making her a little bit more tanky decreased cooldown yeah this is our only way of like surviving besides her ult so this actually makes it to where at least early game you can actually have more survivability that's basically i think what they're doing with this hell increased heal from 7 to 15 plus 0.9 per level to 10 to 18 plus 1 per level increased self heal per level from 5.5 to 6k pretty solid i mean it just makes her more annoying in terms of healing uh switch stances increase radius from 30 to 55 shit also grants 10 to 30 physical power to allies they really want this guy to be a fucking support holy shit that's a lot that's actually a decent amount holy shit but it's only physical so uh now deals 75 percent of the damage in the aoe holy shit Holy shit. No, I don't know. That's not crazy. Now it deals 75% of damage in the AoE. Um, what was it before? Let's go check. Okay, so it was it's 60%. So it's basically a 15% increase, if I'm reading that right. Pretty good. Uh, clean. Uh, Phantasmal. Increased buff duration from 5 seconds to 6 seconds. Decreased cooldown from 13 to 12. That's pretty good. Clean has been uh, not the greatest. Uh, increased scream damage scaling from 40 to 45 so pretty small but still okay oh whoa 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 whoa, whoa. audio changes energy surge maul prey increased heal from 40 to 100 to 40 to 2 oh my god an extra 100 jesus and decreased cooldown by one that's actually pretty huge um decreased cooldown okay life tap increased heal per hit from 6 to 22 to 10 to 30 my god Increased damage scaling per hit from 10 to 15 per hit. Uh oh. Shifted mana cost from 50 to 70 to 55 at all rates. Increased damage scaling from 50 to 55. Okay. So it's the, the, the human form of her one or three that are actually pretty good now. Healing, baby. You might actually be incentivized to go some type of like, I don't know, some healing type build. 
Um, but you know, funnily enough, life tap actually benefits her earlier in the game compared to energy surge, which late game actually kind of, I mean, you're leveling up energy surge first anyways. Um, so you're actually going to get this healing rather quickly. So that's actually really good for audio. Uh, Sylvanas increased health, base prots, physical protection per level. Okay. Small. Ooh, huge buff to Mama. Increased basic attack power per level from 2 to 2.2. Increased healing from 10 to 42 to 15 to 55. What are we making these? What is all these heals, man? Why are we upping these damn heals, bro? Holy shit. Anti-heal. They really want us to build anti-heal. They want another healing meta. I guarantee you Horus' healing is going to get buffed. Decreased mana cost. Cool and decreased cooldown from 70 to... Oh, fuck, dude. Those cooldowns are so quick. Uh, Ama is a lot better now, too, with the fucking healing. Holy shit. It kind of makes sense, though, because, like, AA warriors aren't that great right now compared to AA ability. Um, protector Surge. Increased buff duration from 3 seconds to 5 seconds. So not really any any type of healing, though. Um, and decreased his cooldown. Baka. Regurgitate. Increased projectile speed. Oh, projectile speed. Oh, so you're going to be launching these bitches out. That's pretty cool. That'll be kind of fun. Oh, quality of life. Okay, these are quality of life. Nice. Yu Huang, my boy, dueling dragons, improved the fire and post fire timings for more smooth firing experience. Increased dragon projectile speed by roughly. Okay, this is actually good. Might start playing him more too. I think Yu Huang was already on a rate of God. He got several buffs. And then now, because of his big because his 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 always kind of was clunky and it felt really like laggy or like slow, which kind of made his ult kind of clunky. So I think that's actually pretty nice, along with the the recent buffs to him several patches ago. Small buffs, but you know, consistent. So Yu Hong is pretty, pretty sadded. Uh, I did see Kali. Kali's Mark for Death on Twitter. This is probably the one of the biggest ones here. How much do we have left? Oh, damn. Okay, we're almost done. Uh, Kali, Marked for Death. Kali is now able to reselect her target while in base. So now you can actually, instead of selecting it and then dying and having to select it after, you can now just reselect it with the target. But not only that. This can be done by uh, pressing the basic attack input, which will then bring up her passive. Um, okay, this is going over the same. You're able to right-click the, the passive UI menu. You're able to right-click. So this can be done by pressing the basic attack input, which will then bring up her passive. So you have to auto. You're able to right-click the passive UI menu to close it without making a selection. Um, so you just pick, you know, you kind of cancel your ability. Uh, while in the base, disable ability to reselect target until you're in the base. Uh, decreased physical penetration by 10% to 5 and increased kill assist gold bonus from 30 to 20. Uh, new effect. This is when she jumps. When Kali leaps on enemy god, the lowest current health god is marked automatically. That's what I was going to go into. Um, so now, yeah. So whenever you leap on enemy god, uh, the lowest current health god is marked automatically. Healing effect of this ability has been adjusted for 50% of the targets missing out to 20. Okay, so now it's just a flat, which is actually interesting. Or no, it's still a percent. Actually... It's flat and percent, which overall, if you have anti-heal, um, I think it's a little bit better now for going up against her. Doesn't really change Kali too much. I mean, the passive is better, but like, you're kind of in a rough place. She's always been that god that you just wait till late game and win. Cerberus, improved fire, post-fire timings for smooth fire. So that's just three, I believe. Um, no longer crippled or slow during this ability, which is nice. And then finally, Atlas. Uh, Atlas enhanced basic attacks. Now proc basic attack item effects for 50%. Oh, shit. I wonder if they were like, maybe we should do this too. Atlas is that's actually pretty cool. So now you can proc Hastened. You can proc Telkine, Cyclopean, Poly for 50%. Not going to change them too much. I think you're still going to build him like an ability-based guy, like flat shield, shit like that. Uh, the following abilities can now proc ability item effects. Um, with the new tech pioneer and previous attach, we were able to allow some abilities to proc item effects that pirate previously could not. They have now been sorted in... Okay. We are not intending to let every ability in the game proc item effects, but we'll continue to investigate options for the future. Cthulhu Sever, 100% damage and healing effectiveness. Okay. What which which one is Cthulhu Sever? Hold on. 
Okay, so Cthulhu, that's that's in his ult form. Cherno Zess is uh, passive. Uh, Magma Rush, that's her three. Mommin, that's, I think, her one. And then Oxbow, that's his one. So that's actually pretty interesting. They're kind of making an opposite effect to what it was before. So, like, Branching Bolas didn't proc any ability item effects. Now they can. So, like, you know, Blue Stone, maybe. It's 25%. And then healing and as well as healing effectiveness so it's not gonna be crazy it's gonna be very similar to other ones um so overall kind of cool um quality of life but not gonna have too much of an impact i, I feel uh these these are more now it can actually these will be in the walls now but that's it kind of a pretty mid passive not gonna lie uh I already went over all, everything I said beforehand. You can just go back and listen to it again. I'm not going to say it again, but very generally. Tier 2 items now have passives. Some of them pretty solid. Not going to be crazy. Outside of a couple like Tablet. Um, overall, not, a, not that crazy. And then you have your usual um, God Balances. Nothing too crazy. Vulcan's still going to be really good. I did not mean to do that. Um, Ardeo is pretty good. Poseidon's going to be really good. Baron's going to be really good. Don Tank Don's is going to be pretty solid. Yeah, Vulcan's still going to be not as good, obviously, just objectively speaking, but still not going to be that impactful, going to be honest. We'll have to see, but probably not. Um, and outside of these ones, Book of Thoth, maybe the the uh, this one for Blackthorn. Uh, Aussie's pretty good now. Uh, a couple of these ones that give you movement speed. This one I'm gonna I'm gonna pay attention to this one. This one might be interesting. Um, Stormseeker has this pen, which is actually pretty good. I don't think it's gonna make it like a must go item. And then that's really it. There's nothing much for a mid-season patch. Pretty mid, not gonna lie. Uh, that's probably what I'll name this video. But that is it. Not really surprising. I'm gonna be honest. They kind of they're kind of killing Smite One and they're making it end off on a bad note, in my opinion. Still gonna be playing it, but gotta be honest. Been looking at other games a lot more. <laughs> just you know randomly i don't know why it just seems like you know i've been liking more games but no seriously it's like kind of making it rough because i mean they're not it just you can obviously tell the efforts going into smite 2 smite 1 kind of blows dick a little bit especially for the people that play it every single day i'm still having a, a decent amount of fun in it because i don't get to play it every day but if i had to play it every day i might fucking get a little tired because nothing really changed this next patch, maybe you're like, finally, we can have something new, some new flavor, just a little bit to make us, you know, but no, no, not really. They yeah, answered up a couple things, not really, but what do you guys think of the patch yourself? Let me know in the comment section down below. If you have any feedback, if I miss anything, let me know in the comment section down below. Um, I have uh, memberships open for $3 a month if you would like to support me. One of the best ways to support me if you can. Um, obviously, you don't need to. You just simply watch my videos. Good enough for me. Uh, Discord in the description down below as well if you want to join that. Great people, great community. Want to join games, ask me questions. Join the Discord down below. But other than that, that is it for me. 11.6 mid mid-season patch. Um, but with that being said, with all that being said, thank you guys for watching.